What sparked your interest in mathematics? I liked mathematics in school, uh, and I chose to become a mathematician because the primary subject I liked very much was Euclidean geometry of the plane. Uh, and the, what gave me confidence to, to give a try at a career in mathematics was the International Math Olympiads, where I, was, uh, I had some success, I got on the national team, and I felt that um, it might be worth giving it a shot. I liked it very much, and I, I felt I might succeed in the research career. How did that inform your early research decisions? Not very much, because the subject is more than 2,000 years old. Um, it, it may be influenced the, the, my aesthetical decisions in what, in, uh, in what I, uh, the subjects I wanted to pick. Um, but I but, know uh, I made my research decisions much later, in grad school, let's say. And how did you make those research decisions? So I, I went to, to grad school in Princeton, and... Uh, what was true then was that they, uh, you had to decide quite early on what you want to focus on. There were a few introductory classes, and many, many advanced classes that were inaccessible to somebody with my knowledge level. So I felt I was stronger in analysis just because of my, my training as an undergraduate uh, in Greece. And uh, I, I, was, I decided to make that choice because I just thought I was stronger in that, in that field. Uh, I should also add I took one of the very few introductory courses was in harmonic analysis that I enjoyed very much and uh, so I decided to, 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 to work in analysis yeah. and then how did Charles Fefferman become your PhD advisor? I decided to work in harmonic analysis and um, he was a great expert in the subject um, he was also a very approachable and friendly person and that, and that uh, helped a lot um, I should add that, of course, I didn't end up working in harmonic analysis, and that became quite obvious from, from after my first meeting with him. But I could see he was very broad in, uh, in his interests um, and very encouraging to try out something new. So, so, um, so I, yeah, so I, I initially was tilting towards analysis. He was a very, very strong analyst and a very nice person. And then when I did meet with him and he gave me a list of problems that one could, well, I could consider, I, I liked many, many of them, and so I decided to work with him. You have research threads in general relativity and conformal geometry, but those aren't really the bread and butter subjects of the Chicago School of Analysis. How does that speak to the breadth of Charles Pfefferman's training and of mathematics in general? It really speaks at, uh, to the incredible breadth of his interests and the breadth of his, of, um, of his work. Um, and it also speaks, I think, to, to his courage, that he's so unafraid to try a new field where he doesn't, uh, where he's not an expert. And I, I'd, like to, I'd like to inherit some of those characteristics. Um, yeah. Relativity I moved to later. I could uh, somehow almost by chance because there was um, uh, to some work being done in relativity at the time when I completed uh, some of my, my work in conformal geometry. And it was almost by chance that Ionescu and Kleinemann, who later became my collaborators, were working in a question, and I, I, uh, I asked myself a question related to their work, which turned out could actually be applied to what they were working. <laughs> and so, so we, we, uh, we teamed up. Um, I'd say but. Yeah, I made this transition in part inspired by, uh, by Pfefferman's courage to move in, in new directions that he just felt were interesting and important. How do you choose your research problems? I choose them with delay because it always takes me much longer to complete the research projects I give myself. Um, I, well, I try, to, uh, I, I try to pick problems where have a reasonable chance of success and that are somewhat adjacent to things I know. Uh, but I, I really want to do things that I, I feel are important and interesting. And let me use the word deep also. And how do you define an important problem? Yes, so that's difficult to tell. Um, I'm partly interested in things that are, um, that, that, uh, uh, that are relevant even slightly outside mathematics, most notably to physics, for example. Um, and I feel something, something that, that um, 
question that deserves to be asked, an obvious question, a question that pertains to other subjects, um, that even within mathematics or outside of mathematics, and that should be addressed and should be answered. I try to aim for such questions. Does past research ever inform the decisions, research decisions that you make? Uh, well, certainly, because I, I need to feel that I have some chance of success. But, but I, 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 I try to not to be purely motivated by what I think I could do, but what I think should be done. So I, you know, so I, I, I try not to be too, too stuck to the past. And then maybe I should also ask, uh, I should also add that maybe along with many mathematicians at my age and my stage in their career, um, I had spent a long, long time working on one project that ended up uh, being very long. Um, and I was eager to move in another direction, to learn something new and to, 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 to master new material. And so if that, that, the fact that I was at that stage in my career informed what I, uh, the choices I made and the choice of problems I, I, I picked. And what about industry? Does industry ever inform the research decisions that you make? Up to now, not directly. Okay. I do, um, but like I said, I... I I want my work to have an impact, and I want, uh, and possibly outside mathematics, I want what I do to have some interest even outside mathematics, and I don't mind if it's going to be very many years down the road. Um, yeah, so for example, my work in analysis of partial differential equations, these things are of interest, certainly in the rest of science, and I believe in industry too. Um, so, so, um, so indirectly, I indirectly does influence what I choose to work on. At this stage, it doesn't influence it directly. Would you say that mathematical ideas, when they're really solid, have a ubiquitous relevance to other fields, including those outside of mathematics? It is too difficult. <laughs> it's, it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, that's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, uh, I think so. But we're trained, and mathematicians, we're trained to produce evidence and to prove what we say. It would be very difficult for me to prove that statement for you. Um, uh, but yes, I think, I mean, one, one often sees that uh, ideas that are developed in mathematics early on are picked up and uh, are applied by engineers decades later. So it's very difficult to say what, what is being done today can influence um, can influence uh, other subjects, engineering or industry, um, but uh, it's often it's maybe not what one expects. It's things that look very theoretical and abstract now and tend to be very applicable decades down the road. Would you say there's a way to predict that? If there is one, I don't know it. But <laughs> um, one way to predict, I would think, is if you... If, it, if a given subject becomes successful in mathematics, if one works on a subject all by himself and he can't attract other mathematicians into it, it is very difficult to see how it would attract people outside, his, um, outside the, the world of mathematics. Um, uh, but, uh, um, yes, no, it's, but, but broadly speaking, I think it's too, well, certainly too difficult for me to predict now, and I think it would be very difficult for. <laughs> Or, you know, for most people, it would be very difficult to predict what can be applied further down the road. How do you view mathematical research areas? Do you see them as being distinct from one another? Okay, I may be biased here, but I think the, the um, mathematical research is immense. And I, certainly for somebody at my uh, stage, it is very difficult to, to really grasp what's happening in a couple of fields across the moment, even a couple of fields adjacent to mine. Um, I think mathematics has, although it's so broad, and though it's, if one goes to a, to a seminar outside one's broad area of specialization, you're likely not to understand anything after five minutes. But, um, but one thing mathematics does have is a common language and a common, common understanding of what we're doing. You produce proofs, you produce evidence. That's not, I feel sometimes in other fields, that, not, that common language and that common thread it's not present. So, yeah. And what advice would you give for young students starting out right now in choosing an area to study? People who have already chosen to be mathematicians? Yeah, young mathematicians. 
primarily do something that you enjoy and like, because that you're more likely to be successful there. Um, and you should you should convince yourself of the the merit of what it is you're doing. That's very difficult to do in pure mathematics. I imagine a more applicable field. It's fairly obvious how to. Um, yeah, what well, I mean, choices can be informed by by uh, by other factors which are not present in, in pure mathematics. Um, but you should somehow feel that you, the, the subject that you you pick is interesting to you and has some importance within the subject, within mathematics, or even outside. You should feel that this is going to give you strength. And um, yeah, and um, yeah, that's it. <laughs>